Hello there. So you decided to train Tesseract with your custom font so it recognizes things a little bit better. That's the video for you. So let me jump right into it. Um, so let's first start on how do you train Tesseract. I'm going to show a little bit of the documentation um, and filling the gaps basically. So I think the most important thing is how do you even provide the ground truth? So how do you provide to Tesseract what you think is right? So basically what we want to do here for a custom font is generate images with that custom font and on the same file name kind of attached to the same file you want to generate like a, a text file that describes what's written on the image and also a box file that, on, that describes that on the image each character what's the location of the character and what character is it. That way with that ground truth Tesseract can go and train itself on the new image, right? So I think that's the first thing that you will try to figure out, right? So let's start. Um, so you can see here on the documentation, he mentions you got to have a TIFF file or a PNG file, whatever. We're going to use TIFF for the image that I just mentioned and a .gt.txt file for the ground truth. So that would be like, that whatever is written on the image. I'm going to show later how exactly that looks. Um, but also we got to provide it something called a box file. In my experience, um, the automatically generation of box files of Tesseract can be a little bit finicky. And as we're generating the ground truth ourselves from a custom font, we're going to have both the box, uh, all the text file, um, the, um, the image file, and the, and the box file. Um, so let me show you how exactly that looks like. Um, the first thing I had to do was figure out a way to generate those images, right? So turns out you use the text to image application. Uh, it comes with the Tesseract training tools. So watch my video in the description if you missed that. So after you install Tesseract with its training tools, you're going to have text to image on your path. So, and the problem with text to image is it generates images in a way that was compatible with Tesseract 4, but now Tesseract 5. Tesseract 5 needs something called line images. And those are nothing more than images. There is just a line, a single line, instead of a full, text, full page of text. So the first thing I had to do is figure out training text. So like a textbook somewhere in the web, we can grab text. And in this case, I used the training text from the link data lstm if you go to the english folder you can see you have the english.training text here and that this is just a big file full of english text um so that's where i got it from the problem is text to image gets all this text and generates just an insane amount of, of pages and pages of text with it and we don't want that remember tesseract 5 now wants line images so i developed a quick script that um, gets this training text file and just separates into a, a bunch of files that only has one line in each. I'm going to also show this in a second. Um, and after you generate those files, you can just run text to image just fine. And it's going to generate for you the, the box file and the image itself. Cool. So the first thing I did was creating a link data folder. You can see on the top left here. And all it is is just this um folder here with uh, all those files here uh, we're actually just going to use training text but i digress um and that's about it um so and i wrote this python script here which is also going to be available as a repository i'm going to link in the description and this script you can just run it and it's going to do exactly what i said it's going to get this big text file it's going to get each line and create a separate text file for that um, and then call text to image on that new file to generate everything for us. Um, so let me explain some stuff here. Actually, yeah, we're going to use the link data unichar set to generate uh, the, the new images. Unichar sets basically kind of the rules of English um, that helps the neural network figure out exactly how words are formed in certain languages, English in this case. And you can use whatever you want here. There's plenty. Um, those arguments are mostly I got from what Tesseract for testtrain.sh file uh, used. 
Um, the only thing I changed was the Y size because now instead of being a full page, just a small line. Uh, the shower spacing, so it's not too uh, not too tight. Um, and just one page, of course. And in this case, I didn't say it yet, but I'm going to use the Apex Legends font. Uh, I just downloaded it from the web. Let me see if I can find the Apex regular OTF. So I just downloaded this OTF file from the first Google Chrome, Google uh, search I found. And that's about it. So that's what I'm going to try using. Okay, so let me show you. I'm, I'm going to walk exactly how my whole folder structure is laid out, how exactly everything, every any of this works in a second. But for now, let me just run the script so you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, first, actually, I'm going to create the data folder and the ground truth data folder. So I think the best documentation for training I found to be the readme of this repository it actually tells you exactly what to do instead of some high level ideas. It actually tells you do that and you get training going. One thing it says is you got to create a folder called data uh, and then the model name you're going to train. In my case, it's apex dash ground dash truth. So that's what I did here. I just created data apex dash ground dash truth. And now if I run split training.txt.py, it should do exactly what I mentioned. It's going to get the training text file, which is an insane amount of words. Um, and you're going to separate into a bunch of small single line text files. Um, generate an image from that and a box file from that. Let me show you how that looks. So I'm going to, this is uh, Windows WSL, by the way, with Ubuntu. So I'm going to copy those files over to my actual Windows machine. And that looks good, actually. I'm going to get to my downloads folder. And done. Coolio. So this is what those files looks like. So you can see just an image. Windows we walk about page small feeds garden foreclosure index member auto. Um, this is the text file I generated. Windows we walk about page small blah blah. Okay, cool, dope. Same thing. And most importantly, generates a box file. The box file is basically each letter in what exact position it is on the image. And I imagine size, rotation, scale, maybe I don't know. But you can see see Windows written here vertically. So this is each letter, then a space here, we, and so on. So this is all generated by the text to image. This is not Tesseract yet. There's nothing running, no machine learning, anything. So this is just us generating a ground truth. So we're generating like a beginning, like something that we know, a, not human, but, you know, something we completely trust. It's not generated by um, AI. And we're going to use that to train. Okay, cool. Um, so... So let's begin training, I guess. Um, let me go to test train. And this is what it looks like. I kind of crafted this command. Uh, I'm going to put in the description of the video as well. It's going to be this bad boy. Okay, so explaining some things here. Um, it's going to use the Tesseract folder, one folder of test data. Um, so what is that? Let me show you. So I basically cloned Tesseract. And inside test director is a folder called test data. And it has some English network default things. So this file wasn't here, I put in here, but all the, all the others were, uh, including those configs file, which is what we're actually looking for, which is the lstm.train and a bunch of others here. So basically, if you get clone tesseract inside here, um, tesseract OCR, tesseract. There you go. If you clone it, this folder is going to be in there, right? But it's missing the english.train data file. So we also got to get that. So to get that, we go here and we click clone the test data best. And on that test data best, you're just going to find the train data file. And then you just get this train data file and lap it inside the Tesseract tutorial, inside the Tesseract folder clone, inside test data. This is all going to be on GitHub again, like this whole folder structure. So don't care, don't care too much about exactly the folder structure. Just continue watching the video so you understand what I'm doing. And then you can do your own folder structures the way you want and so on. Um, okay, so back to explaining exactly what I'm doing with that command, um, which is this. Okay, so we're saying Tesseract test data is where the 
some of the test data is going to be like the English and so on. And then we're going to run this make file here. Uh, oh, right. This is the test string repository. This is the one I was talking about that the readme is good. So you would definitely want to clone that as well. Again, it's going to be on my GitHub, but you would clone that yourself if you want to do it from scratch. Um, and then um, inside here, right, inside test string, there's a make file. That make file is what I actually runs a bunch of commands and one of them is the training command um, then as a bunch of variables you can specify i'm going to specify the model name being apex they start model on english that means i'm going to train all those things on top of the english model and then again for some reason also needs this test data again folder same path as before okay and then i'm going to put max iterations actually 100 all that means i'm going to begin with english um, and I'm going to run 100 iterations. This is very low. This is really not a lot, 100 iterations. You should definitely bump that to something that finishes within a reasonable amount of time. You've got to experiment. Um, but something like 10,000, 20,000 might be good. You don't want to overfit, so you want, don't want to do a lot. Um, here, the best thing is experiment. To you what use the best results, see what you can wait, and so on. Let me actually do a little bit more. I'm going to do 400 iterations, so you can see kind of the progress. So... It began with a 66% error rate, which is definitely suboptimal. Uh, so you can see 100 iterations is really not great. So I bumped this to 400, and let's see if that's going to improve any. So now it's already on 53%. So that's what I'm saying. If you spend, if you let your computer do this for hours on end, maybe two days, uh, you, you can probably get a very low error rate. Just again, be aware to not overfit the network. So, um, one thing you can do is instead of generating a hundred files, I'm going to show later, you can generate way more line files for the training data. So, you can see on the script I created here, instead of going through this whole file, which has a total of 193,000 lines, I just did a hundred right because we gotta finish right for the video but if you remove this limitation here if you just go on my script and comment those two lines that means now it's going to generate 193,000 images for your um, network your network to train so that might be a little bit better for you so you can see it's dropping roughly 10 percent each time so you can see if i continue a bunch of iterations it's going to get a really good result and if i try actually evaluating it so this is a command to evaluate so i'm going to evaluate english1.tiff so this is an image i'm going to print to the standard output i'm going to use the test data there as this um, um, the data folder we just created that has now the check it out apex.train data so this is our model it has the finished model of a new newly generated data i'm going to say this file is just a single line of text which we know it is and i'm going to say the language is the, just the one i created now apex and log level all what it gets of it and you can see it works pretty well um so that's kind of it i'm gonna uh, get this repo story up on the url so you guys can just download it and start uh, messing with the script um, one of the reasons on this script i didn't do any arguments is because i want you guys to change it i want you to go here and change the output directory the name of the model the name of the font i don't want to create a tool that someone can just call it with a bunch of arguments and call it a wrap and it fails and you have no idea why i want you guys to understand what's going on here so you can do way more than just train your custom font you can do more stuff you can get ground truth which isn't generated by text to image you can get ground truth that is generated by yourself by a human there's many many options here okay so now let me explain exactly how it works uh let me see where do i even begin um so i think i explained well the box file which is just uh getting the image uh, with a ground truth text that the image has written in it in a box file which basically says each character where it's positioned on the screen and which character does it represent and that's basically how you train tesseract period not just for a custom font for anything really the trick here is how do you get the ground truth in our case as it's just a custom font we can just generate it automatically robotically and just generate it and then train the data on a massive amount of data right but let's say you want to train with handwritten data now you cannot automatically generate handwritten data right so you got to scan things and so on you got to actually generate the ground truth text files and not only that you would also generate the box files there are, there are tools for that if you google 
box fire generator tesseract you should probably find some applications that can do that for you and that's kind of the gist of it um let me see what else i could explain um, there's the test train um and i think that's basically the gist of it there's tesseract with the test data folder and then you put english.train data inside that's basically all you do and the link data you get from the english folder on the link data lstm repository so i think that wraps it up um if you want to train a different font which isn't uh the one i trained so you can see i specified dash dash font equal apex in here uh what you do is just Roboto. you can just select the font you want and how do you install this font so i think in my case it was something like going to user local share fonts yep and then i put this font here um which i downloaded from the web and then you can just run let me think ft cache yeah there you go fc cache fv that's going to force um ubuntu to reevaluate the cache of fonts it's going to find apex legends and cache it and now it's a recognized font uh, on windows you just double click a font you're going to see there's an install button see install and after installing the font you can just specify it here and then you can just use it to train uh, you're getting just a bunch of stuff here as well uh, you can see on the images i kind of generated them a little bit wider than necessary so if you want to really optimize it you could just um, reduce the image size a bit see there's a lot of white space in the right you could remove a bunch of that you can see there's also a lot of space below but i could not remove it actually it was uh texture image was failing anything too small so 480 worked and i left at it you can also change the exposure character spacing so you can see they're very spaced out on my generation so there's a lot of space between them you could increase that or remove that whatever you want um that's kind of the gist of it there's not a lot of secret uh feel free to download my repository and change uh, as you wish if you want to make any improvements feel free to also make changes and submit a pull request and i hope it was helpful uh if you have any problems any questions just let me down in the com let me know in the comments below i'm going to try replying in a timely manner um and please subscribe if you want to see more content leave a like and godspeed